All right, folks, welcome to another episode of Lid Tips. In this series, what we do is we discuss or talk about various topics that are of interest to ham radio or amateur radio operators. In this particular episode, we're going to be talking about common mode current. We're going to talk about what it is, what it does to your ham shack, and how you can avoid it. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, why don't you do yourself a favor, go grab a nice cold one, come on back, and we'll get started. Oh yeah, and before I forget, leave a question or comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, I want these uh, videos to be interactive and any topics that get brought up might become a future episode of Lid Tips. Also, click the like and subscribe if you like and you want to subscribe. We all know you want to. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get started with the video. All right, thanks for making it back, everybody. So as we begin this conversation on common mode current, we are going to take a look at uh, my HF rig in my ham shack. And we're going to use that as a topic of discussion for this particular video. So uh, here is my uh, HF rig, Apes rig. And uh, we're going to talk about it from the left-hand side of the slide and move to the right. I want to talk about the MFJ power supply. I've had this thing for about five years, and it still works great. Now, when I initially bought it, people were telling me that thing's got a noisy fan. It's going to cause you problems and it creates RFI, um, which in turn is common mode current. Um, and it's going to be a problem for you. That, that's what folks were telling me. Uh, five years later, uh, I do have a problem with RFI coming out of this power supply. I didn't notice it at first because I was mostly on UHF and VHF and it wasn't an issue for me there. The fan does make some noise when I turn the power supply on, but after about a minute or so, it, uh, it quiets down. I should mention that this is grounded to uh, the mains ground, and that is done by plugging this power supply directly into a wall outlet. I probably should have it going into a surge protector of some sort. Now my radio is the ICOM 7300 like everybody else, and uh, people have said that this radio is susceptible to RFI interference or CMC. And I haven't really, I don't know if that's true or not. I just think that might be haters talking, but maybe it is. I also connect via the USB port on the back of the radio, Raspberry Pi 4. And I use this for digital modes. It's always on and it's always plugged in. And then the AC adapter for this particular device plugs into a surge protector. And that surge protector could be causing me some problems as well. And then I have two connections. One is a cat control connection, and then the other is a uh, piece of coax that connects to my LDG Pro 2 100 automatic tuner. And uh, I'm going to plug that tuner. I love it. The tuner is connected via coax. Now this coax can change based off of what antenna I'm using. Um, and also the antennas change. I, I have a bunch of different antennas that I play around with and I like to use. When I started assembling this ham shack, I noticed that I had a very high noise floor, and I knew that it was the result of common mode current or RFI. But I also didn't know how much of that I had control of or how much was in my environment versus the outside environment and started looking at ways to reduce that. I always had a noise floor of S9, which made it impossible to operate um, anything other than FT8. Um, it really was driving me crazy, and it was making it so I wasn't having as much fun as I should be having when using that particular radio. <clears throat> okay, so you're probably asking, what is common mode current, or CMC? It's often abbreviated CMC, so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, the first thing you need to know is common mode current is bad. It's often called radio frequency interference, or RFI. In some cases, people refer to it as electromagnetic interference, or EMI, but I don't really see that so much in the ham space. This interference can be caused by power lines, GFIC outlets. I had a lot of problems with the GFIC outlet, both impacting me as well as me impacting the outlet. When uh, I was doing FT8 and had some Christmas lights plugged into that outlet, um, the outlet kept tripping, and at one point it tripped to the point where it broke and I had to replace the outlet. And that was in the winter and it was freezing cold outside, so I was not happy about that. Uh, it can be created by fluorescent lights, television sets, uh, electronic devices like uh, iPads and iPhones or uh, Android devices, um, power supplies like my uh, MFJ power supply, or even broadcast radio. And what happens is, is that all of these different things causing this interference put radiation out there that is picked up 
by uh, your antenna, by your feed line, by uh, different devices or components of your ham shack. And at the end of the day, uh, CMC is a noise and we don't like it. We want to get rid of it. It's not our friend. So you may be asking, what does CMC do? And uh, one of the things it does is it raises your noise floor and it makes it more difficult to operate. There is uh, one case where I put a choke in line uh, with my ham shack and it dropped my noise floor by about two and a half S units. And uh, I was elated by that. I was very happy. Um, it can mess with your SWR where it can create interference on your transmission lines or your antenna system. Um, and it can also potentially give you false readings. It degrades your receive and transmit signals. And this is the thing that uh, I'm also really concerned about in that, you know, we spend a lot of money on radios and then we go to a lot of trouble to either build or buy a uh, antenna. And some folks uh, will fancy themselves antenna experts and talk about the resonant antennas that they use. Um, but then they, they don't do anything about CMC suppression. And uh, the CMC actually reduces the overall efficiency of your antenna system and your ham shack as a whole. Um, you really can't ignore um, CMC suppression. If you uh, go down the road of trying to control the CMC impacts on your ham shack, you'll probably be a much better operator, much happier operator, I should say. CMC can damage your equipment. Um, there's been cases where particular parts have gotten fried or, or, or uh, devices have stopped working. Um, it's not good, and uh, we, don't, we don't want that. Um, and they can shock you. Like You'll hear stories of guys doing their dits and dahs on their, on their keys and uh, getting bit, is what folks will say. Uh, from the CMC coming into the shack, into their chassis of the radio, and then out on peripheral devices, um, and you can get you can get shocked by that. You can also get shocked by the chassis itself. So I don't know about you, but I don't enjoy getting shocked, and would like to avoid that. Now we always include this diagram in every conversation about RFI or common mode current. It's just what hams do. So I decided I wanted to have some credibility, and I did the same thing. What's depicted here is a dipole connected directly into coax feed line. And you'll see a lot of people who will build um, antennas, dipole antennas, and they will talk about balance. And what they'll say is, is, I've never had a problem. I don't have a problem. I don't use a balance. I just connect my dipole arms directly to my coaxial cable. And that may work for them, but it doesn't work for everybody. So what you'll see here is that arm one connects to the center pin of your coaxial cable and arm two is connected to the shield that runs down uh, the inside of the insulation on your coaxial cable. And the way AC current works is, is that when you have current come in, you have current come out. And as the current is coming in on arm one, you also have current coming out on arm two. And some of that current can be reflected back into the, um, the outside of your, of your cable. And this is called the skin effect. And that results in common mode current that makes its way all the way back down to your ham shack in search of ground. As I mentioned earlier, your antenna can also pick up other radiation, and so can your feed line, causing you some of these problems. So it's the best practice to put some sort of choke in place at the feed point of your antenna and not connect directly to the coax cable. So in the last slide, I referred to something called a ballon. And uh, we're not going to go too deep into ballons in this particular video because we want to keep the video short. We'll do a separate video on ballons at a later date. But the term ballon refers to a device that is used, by, uh, used in antenna systems to match impedance between an antenna and a feed line. Generally, the match is between a balanced antenna, such as a dipole, so you have your two legs where they connect to a center point into your coaxial cable. And that coaxial cable is considered uh, unbalanced. And then you come up with the term ballon, which is a combination of the words balanced and unbalanced. Now, your ballon could be either a voltage or a current ballon, but we'll cover that in a ballon video. Now this is where the conversation gets tricky. We're going to talk a little bit about a ballon versus a choke, and I've mentioned chokes earlier in the video. So uh, it's my understanding that technically a ballon is not a choke. Chokes are for reducing common mode current, or CMC, uh, EMI, or RFI. Uh, people often refer to chokes as ballons. So for example, on your dipole, when you put a one-to-one -one, uh, current ballon in place, you really put it in a choke because you're not matching the impedance between the transmission line and the antenna. Uh, what you're doing is, is that you're introducing something that will filter out uh, CMC or RFI. And that's referred to as a choke, as we mentioned. Now, one of the things I wanted to say here is that the, the role of a ballon and the choke is both to stop noise on your transmission lines. So I guess it's easy to see how people get confused and they use the same terms interchangeably. 
Here we're going to try to refer to everything that we use as a choke as a choke and not a ballon. So whenever you talk about a ballon, there's always somebody in the room that wants to talk about a nun -un. And uh, this refers to a device that's used in antenna systems to match impedance between an antenna and a feed line, just like a ballon. Um, generally, this matches between an unbalanced antenna, um, an N-fed uh, random wire or a N-fed half wave are good examples of unbalanced antennas. Um, and then they go into your coaxial cable, which again is unbalanced feed line. So the word un, -un is a combination of unbalanced to unbalanced. So again, we have another artist rendition. And uh, this talks about how CMC gets into your shack. And in this picture, we have a dipole antenna that's connected via some coaxial cable into a tuner. And you'll notice that we have a box with a bunch of blue arrows coming out of it. The, that box represents stuff. It represents the stuff that we talked about earlier that calls RFI or CMC interference. Um, that stuff can impact your antenna. It can impact your transmission lines. We've talked about that. Um, it can impact your tuner um, and it can impact your radio. So one example, and uh, I'll have a video coming out on this, is that I was using my radio and all of a sudden my noise floor would go through the roof. So somebody was turning something on and I'm trying to figure out what it is and I can't. Uh, and it turns out that my wife had plugged in her, her iPhone to charge and somehow that was generating interference that was directly impacting my radio. My DC power supply, uh, my MFJ power supply, um, stuff could impact that. So you have a, a length of cable, or you should, you should say wire, that runs current from the power supply into the radio. And we actually put a choke there. And as I mentioned earlier, that was the most impactful choke that I used. That, um, that wire can act as an antenna, pick up uh, radiation, and then port it directly into my radio. And then also you can have AC power. Um, and AC power comes from the grid. And we talked about the GFI circuit. So you can have um, common mode current on your home uh, AC power system that can impact your power supply and then go into your radio. So this all becomes very confusing stuff. And people will say, well, where do chokes belong? Um, this is not an exhaustive list. I'm not an expert on common mode current and I'm not an expert on chokes. But I can tell you what I did and it's made a significant difference. Um, we already talked about it, the antenna feed point. And uh, I, I believe that where your coaxial cable goes into your antenna, regardless of antenna, you should use some sort of choking device. Whether it's ferrite beads or a toroid core with some wire wrapped around it, you should be choking some CMC out there. Um, also, where your coaxial cable enters into your shack. And for me, I'm considering this where my coax goes into my tuner. Um, wherever your coax comes in, uh, again, it's a best practice to put a, a choke there as well. Now, some people, if your transmission line between your shack and your antenna is more than a quarter wavelength of whatever band you're operating on, will interject chokes along the way of their transmission line. That may be overkill, but um, folks do it. Um, also, any cable that enters into your radio should be choked. Uh, that's the USB wire, for example, that I have uh, on my Raspberry Pi. And then also, uh, folks will choke their mains grounds. Not just the mains ground to your shack, but uh, other people have done things where their refrigerator was causing a problem. So they, they put a, a toroid core on the power cord for the refrigerator. Um, ovens, washers, and dryers are other likely suspects of CMC. All right, so what does Ape choke? This is what I choke. Starting over on the left-hand side of the screen, um, I do have a, uh, a, a T240-31 mix toroid core. Um, wrapped around the power cord of my uh, MFJ power supply. I believe I got six turns. Um, that cable's pretty fat and uh, it was difficult to do, but I believe there's six of them in there. Also, between the power supply and my ICOM 7300 along the wire that I use to deliver power, um, it's a it's 12, 12 gauge wire. Um, I have that wrapped. I think I have 12 turns. It might be 11. Um, we'll take a look. I have a picture of it. We'll see that. Um, wrapped around the, the same same toroid core, a uh, 240-31. And uh, like I mentioned, that's where I lost about two and a half S units off my noise floor. It made the biggest difference of anything that I've done. Also, I have a ferrite bead uh, that wraps around the USB cable that comes out of the radio and into my Raspberry Pi. And I believe I got about three or four turns on that. Um, and I did, uh, it did make a difference. And I have a video on that. I also have a video on the one I put on the power line. 
under RFI in my Shack playlist uh, on the Smoke and Ape channel. And then I also have another um, toroid core on the AC power adapter that comes out of the Raspberry Pi and then goes into the surge protector that we discussed earlier. Um, I keep a choke on the coaxial cable that goes between my uh, 7300 and then my LDG tuner. Uh, people might think that that's a little bit uh, overkill to short a piece of coax, but I put it there. I, I'll be honest, I didn't notice a discernible difference, but that doesn't mean I won't in the event that CMC bothers me at some point in the future. And then um, I actually, on my transmission line that goes between the tuner and the antenna, I have two chokes there. Um, as I mentioned, one where the coax cable comes into the shack and connects to the tuner, and then I have another one where the uh, where the coaxial cable connects into my antenna feed point. Um, and different ones get used depending upon the type of antenna. So this is the part everybody's been looking forward to, the pictures. So uh, this is an antenna feed point choke that I use for NFED antennas. Uh, it's, a, it's a series of toroidal cores around a piece of coaxial cable and then some heat shrink tubing on it. Um, I actually bought this choke uh, from Chameleon Antennas. Uh, it was like 40 bucks, so it was pretty expensive. But uh, I connect it right onto that uh, 9 to 1 unun that you see in this picture, and then there's some wire there. It's one of my NFED antennas. Um, but right at the coax input uh, of, of this uh, unun is where I put that particular choke, and it works out really well for me. So here is another antenna feed point choke uh, that I use. And... Um, this is one that I actually built into a, uh, a choke kit that you would call one-to-one Valen. Um, this is a, it's a uh, T130-2 uh, toroidal core. This one is iron powder, and I've just been playing around with it. This has a particular winding that includes nine turns. And then um, I just, as I mentioned, I put this into a box where I, where I mounted it onto some, uh, some coax adapters. And uh, we'll take a look at that in another video. This is the choke that I use on my power supply. We can count the reds, and uh, that'll tell us how many turns it is. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's nine. Uh, I couldn't remember. And that's wrapped around a T130 dash, uh, I'm sorry, T240 dash 31. 31 is the ferrite mix that's inside of that. Um, and I just put that in line with my power cord, and you can see the, uh, the uh, power pole adapters that I put on there. <clears throat> This is the choke that I use between the 7300 and the LDG tuner. And um, it's about nine feet of uh, RG8X uh, coaxial cable. And uh, for two coils, I have it going through four ferrite beads. So that would be eight turns that are going through that. Um, with the coax, the more turns increases your impedance, but then you start to hit the law of diminishing returns where it doesn't really matter as much. Um, as I mentioned, I do use this. Uh, I have everything choked, so I didn't notice a big difference, but uh, I do believe it helps. It doesn't hurt. Um, and again, it may help me out in the future, so I'm just going to keep using that. And that takes us to the end of the slideshow. Um, what I'd like to do is thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you like this video, go ahead, click the thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.